Welcome back to ETX Real Service and Repair. My name is Randy. And this is uh, the service and reassembly video of the Pin Jigmaster 500S. Alright. Now we're going to start by doing the uh, we're going to start with the uh, clicker side and put the bearing back in the spool bearing on the clicker side I went ahead and greased my threads off camera And for this service, I will be using Lucas Reel Oil, Fishing Reel Oil, and Pins Precision Reel Grease. I am not endorsed or paid by either of these companies. I use their products because I think they're good products. And... Uh, I'm using Pins Precision Reel Grease, not because it's a pin reel, but because it's a fishing reel grease. So let's get started. I'll grease the click tone. I'm going to put a little grease in that bearing right there and a little film around the click spring. Let me pop this up. I can finish greasing the other parts. And that ought to be sufficient. Push it back down, and I'm going to take a little bit, a little drop of fishing reel oil and drop it in behind the clicker button. All right, now next I'm going to put some, I'm going to put it on this. This is just something that I like to do. It's not something that you have to do. But I like to put a film of grease inside the frame. But I think that it helps with corrosion and helps you be able to get it apart on the next service. And it don't have to be a lot. Like I said, this is just a film. And with what's left on this brush, I'm going to put it on this too. And it's just a thin little film. On this clicker side plate. And maybe y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay. There we go. Now, attempt to put this back on. Where's my, there's my hole. I get it lined up. Get this screw tightened back down. And we should be good right there. 
And while I got this handy, I'm going to go ahead and put a little grease around the inside of this trim ring. Now I'll tell y'all something while it's on my mind. Y'all really ought to demand that Loretta do some of the more of these videos. Because it's actually her business. And uh, to be honest with you, she's probably better at this than I am. It's just she has a problem with the camera. No one watches the videos when I do one. <laughs> so anyway, what I'm going to do next... Is go ahead and drop the spool back in. I'll get a little grease. Now I'm not going to put any grease in the click ratchet. You can put grease in here, but it's going to dampen the sound of your clicker. It won't be quite as loud for a while until that grease wears off. So you know, you know what I mean. Go ahead and drop the spool back in. There we go. Get some of this stuff out of the way. And now we can start with the reassembly of the bridge plate. And the... Uh, handle side. And I'm going to go ahead and start first by putting this spool bearing for the handle side <clears throat> back in. Y'all feel free now to, because I don't always look at the camera. So y'all, all, when you're your viewer, subscriber, if you watch the video, let me know in the comment that you're not staying in frame where we can see. Because sometimes I do mess up and get it out of frame. Now, for this click tongue, I mean this <clears throat> anti-reverse dog, I am going to put a little bit of grease under here, help it slide easily, and a little grease on the on that spring. And now I'm going to take and grease the stud. Making sure to get some in the uh, groove where the pin goes through. That ought to be sufficient. And now we pick our gear sleeve. Once again, I'm going to push down, put, put a little tension on the anti-reverse dog so that it's out of the way of the ratchet. There we go. And now we put our pin back in. And you all, you do occasionally get one. It's that easy to put back in. Didn't have to do anything but put it in by hand. Now then, I want to get my washers out. Get my hard washer. And of course, it's always at the bottom of the parts bin. Now we take and reinstall our hard washer. And I can reinstall 
the main gear. With these gloves on, it makes it hard to pick up parts sometimes out of the tray. Okay, now my washers <clears throat> nice and smooth, the metal ones. If they weren't, you could, uh, I use uh, 4 steel wool and you can clean those up. And I'm going to put a little bit of grease on these washers, just a little bit. You see, just want to keep it moist. Don't put a lot. If you have a big glob of grease on there, wipe it off. First is a fiber washer. And I always check the thickness on these uh, keyed washers. Because if you have one that is thicker than the others, that thick one generally goes on top. It'll be the last key washer you put in. Just a little dab of grease on it. Works just fine. Now for the eared washer. See the ears on it? And there's grooves in the main gear. If you can see those cutouts there, that's where the eared washer goes. It sits in there just like that. And the last of fiber washer. And then the last of the keyed. And then there is a tension washer that goes on top of that. And the ferrule I'm gonna it'll it'll go over the gear sleeve. And it sits on there just like so, just like that. But I am going to install it last. Okay. Now while I've got this here, I'm going to take and put a little drop of oil on that eccentric right behind it. Let that work in and put a little bit of a little grease on the eccentric and in the slot around that stud where the eccentric jack will come into contact with it and grease on the eccentric on the face of it simply because you're going to have metal to metal contact there. start by putting the springs in and just with what's on my brush put a little film on these springs and these springs go here in these little slots right here just like so now this is just something that is a matter of preference to me. I think it helps with corrosion resistance. Greasing, putting a little film of grease on the springs. Typically, it's not something you have to do. It's just a preference of mine. 
I prefer to do that. Now we will go to the yoke. First of all, grease the main of uh, the pinion gear. And get some in that groove where the uh, it mates up to the yoke. That's plenty of grease there. And now we'll put some on the the jack and get it inside there. And some on the back side. Now the part facing the top, I always <clears throat> grease that whole thing simply because the uh, it the jack sliding up and down on it have metal to metal contact. And we put in the pinion. Just like that. Well, it's going to sit crooked on me the way that's sitting. It's not going to want to sit properly. There we go. Now we have that in place. And put some grease on the jack. If I can hang on to it. <laughs> Jack back in. And these pegs here, they will face down. So the jack will actually go like this. I didn't do this. A little bit in here. And something else I like to do is put grease on that side plate stud because <clears throat> that stud is where this slot right here is going to ride or slide up and down that. Now we will push down on the on the pinion and yoke. And we have our centric jack installed. Now we'll put some grease on the main gear. It don't have to be a lot. It will work itself around. You can over grease. That ought to be plenty. And now we can mate it all back up. And what we want to do here is push down on the jack and the pinion and then we'll rotate this around I can't do nothing like that I always have to I 
hold pressure on it until everything drops into place. Now, we have that ready to go. Now I'm going to take a pick and make sure that those springs and everything is lined up. Let us like this. I'm just using that pick to make sure those springs are lined up. And now I'm going to put a fully threaded through the bottom and just get it started. A couple of turns. Come over here to the top with a partially threaded on the opposite side. It's wanting to fight me a little bit. Okay, we got that one started. Go ahead and put the bottom screw fully threaded. Get it started. And the last of the partially threaded. This one, I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. Then come across to the bottom on the opposite side. Tighten that one down. And go to the top one here. You don't want to over tighten these, just get them nice and snug. Click, everything's good. Grease the spool. And get it ready to reinstall. back in very easily. I'm getting grease all over Loretta's cleaning job. Now we take our what would be considered post screws, side screws for the side plate. I see I did not grease these. 
them just a little bit, that's all it takes. And just attempt to get one started. And sometimes they can be contrary. Just have a little patience. You will eventually get it. I haven't gotten that one yet. What I'm going to do is try that bottom one. Sometimes these things can fight you. See if I can get that bottom one started. It started. See if that other one will start. It did. Greasing the screws. That's just a matter of preference. Now we come over to the opposite side. And see if we can get one started. The pin jig master is really an easy reel to service yourself. It's not difficult. Actually, none of the pin reels I have done are difficult. Now I'm going to tighten this one on down. Come back over to the other side to the top one. Tighten it down. And go back over here on the top and tighten it don't over tighten just get them good and snug there we have it now Install the ferrule. Get our star drag. <clears throat> Be very careful because this is a your gear sleeve is brass and you can cross thread it. Now if you do cross thread it. You have two options. You, if you have a tap and die set that will fit this, you can rethread it or you can purchase a new gear sleeve. Now, what I do once I get it started, as you see, it stops. Now the whole thing is turning. I take the handle and use it as a wrench or like a wrench. And get that star drag adjuster out of the way where you can get your handle on and it's not anywhere close to your star drag. You have this too high and you put all this together, you'll have it jammed up and you won't be able to move it. Now we can take our handle nut. Put it back on. It is scalloped. 
So you have to line one of those scallops up when you tighten it with this screw hole here for the set screw. And there it is. Now this screw here is so small, I don't put grease on it. I just put a drop of oil on it. On those threads. And this is always the fun part for me. A little bitty screw. And there we have it back in. And the handle, you have a ball here. That's for oiling your handle. It's spring loaded. And work that in. And then wipe off the excess. And we should have a functioning reel. See if we got quicker. We and we have drag. Now if I hadn't agreed this. When I put it together, there is a same type of ball bearing here, spring loaded from the bottom that you can drop oil in it. And there's also one over here on this spool bearing. It's like a check valve is what it is. And then you can just back off your drag when the reel is not in use. That's how I would recommend that you store your reels back the drag off. I encourage everyone to and ask you to subscribe to the channel if you have not. If you are interested in this type of thing um, and then wanting to service your own reel, my videos sometimes go a little long because I try to make sure that for those who want to service their reel themselves, that they can see what I'm doing, how it went back together. Uh, also, take this time to uh, tell you about ETX uh, Reel Service on eBay. We have an eBay store. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, please do so. This has... Uh, Well, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this has uh, been the service and reassembly of the Pin Jigmaster 500S. And I hope you enjoyed it. This is a video. This is a fishing reel. That makes it a fishing reel video. And I'll see you on the next one.